So I just want to have a quick check. Can you hear me well? Can you yes. hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, is everyone ready? It's uh, three o one. We have got a lot to explore today, so I cannot afford to wait for your friends for too long. But if you know your friends are not here, please text them. You know, um, you can always, uh, can you see invite button under the, um, do you see as a participant? Can you see invite button at the bottom? Yes. Okay. You can click on the invite button. Okay. You can uh, copy invite link, for example, if they, they, they can't find the link, you know, like you can share that link so that it's easier for your friends to join. Okay, that's just, just so you know. All right, while waiting, I'm just going to wait for two minutes. Uh, yesterday, we didn't get the chance to uh, do a lot of uh, question and answer session. Anyone got burning questions like, oh, I need to ask this now, right now. Yes, please. <laughs> if you have any questions from yesterday's session. Feel free to, you can chat. You can always use the chat button, chat box. All right, thank you. I need to click on this. Anyone, good question. Oh, thank you. Sri Mao. Is that how you pronounce your name? From Cambodia. Hello. Yes, that's correct. How do you say hi in Cambodia? Jum Sua. Jum Sua. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll learn that later. All right. Um, okay. Just one more minute. I'll just wait a little bit. If anyone got question. So sorry, Madam, that like that's the homework yet today. I <clears throat> I didn't like um submit submit that because as it's like oh, really oh a crowd activity so sorry so yeah, much. yeah that's fine i uh i don't mind uh it's just uh it's just an activity a reflection you know i've got um uh, i received some uh feedback from students uh sorry students some participants uh we'll share that later uh, i cannot afford to share everyone's um answers or not answers uh, uh photos but i will share some of it that i think is interesting yeah that's fine uh, a if you cannot uh it fill in the form yesterday it was it was hectic yesterday wasn't it suddenly you know it's five o'clock and then we have to end the session so okay thank you all right so I'm just going to share, uh, we've waited for your friends, hopefully uh, they can join uh, later. Can you see my slide now? Yes. 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 All right. Okay, day two, academic writing for research, special education and inclusive education. So if you uh, have any question, uh, yes, at the end of the session, if you can remember, I've shared um, a QR code, yeah? Uh, for those who don't know how to use this QR code, you can download a QR reader. It's a reader on your apps, on your phone, you can download a reader where you can uh, use your camera to, uh, to scan the code. It will bring you to this link. It's the same link, it's just that it's QR code, you don't have to type. It's a long name, you know, like with, with the current uh, websites, increasing increased number of websites, sometimes the the, um, the name can be uh, long. All right. So um, it's a Padlet, uh, a Padlet website. Yeah. Padlet is an application where you can use uh, the functions in it to become like a notice board, like online notice board. So uh, we'll, we'll go through this page for a while. Um, it's just that uh, I'll show, what do I do? <clears throat> Maybe I should share, I'll share a screen instead of, okay. So I have opened the Padlet here. Wait. 
need to move this thing. Uh, this is blocking my view. I got a panel. Video panel. Got. Oh, uh, not video panel. Sorry. Show video panel. Uh, this one. This button. I cannot go to the next step because this thing is blocking my view. Can you see this thing? Yeah, especially this thing. Can you see, uh, see what I am sharing? It's the Padlet. Yes, Doctor. All right, thank you for responding. Uh, so this is the website, uh, Padlet, where where I used to, I will, I, I used to, um, I use it to, to share our notes. For example, yesterday we have done day one, so the notes, uh, the the slides is here, and then day two I have uh, uploaded uh, day two uh, slide because somebody uh, somebody give feedback to receive the, the notes uh, before the class. So yes, please feel free to download it if you need it now. Okay, if not, you can just wait later. Okay, right. madam, um, that look interesting. That look interesting because I now today I use like um the Canva presentation and this one that gets a lot like okay, a new that's idea. Different. That's different. Yeah. I'm gonna share now. Uh, okay. I also receive feedback that uh I, my 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 slides are pretty, you know, like you've got design. So I just want to share. I learned this from a teacher. If I don't know if she's in now, uh Cik Gura Waida, are you there? She's a Malaysian. Uh, she received uh, she is um she received a lot of uh, innovation awards. Is she in already? I've asked her if it's all right if I want to introduce her because she she taught us, she came to not she came, like she became a panel for our uh, our pre-service teachers in UKM uh, to train how. Uh, we can develop online materials, online resources. For example, um, like, like this, we are using um, PowerPoint, isn't it? But there are many websites and many uh, functions uh, online, applications online that you can integrate in your presentation. I think it's a great time uh, to uh, improve our online teaching and learning skills, not just teaching and learning, presentation skills, because, you know, when you do uh, conferences, virtual conferences, people rely on your slide. So it has to look good, isn't it? So uh, I don't think she's in, but for those, uh, for those in Malaysia or maybe overseas who wants to invite her, her name is Rawaida. Um, I've asked her permission to introduce herself. Let me just type her name in the chat. Uh, I think we're going to something. If you notice, you can just uh, uh Kedah. I think she's from Kedah. Anyone knows her? Anybody else? Any any other participants who know her? I think she's from Kedah. We'll, we'll just wait if she's uh she's around. Okay. Okay. Uh, the other thing is just now. Um. A uh, responded that he used uh, Canva, canva.com, yeah? I use Slides Go. Slides Go and, uh, give me a second. Uh, uh, Rosaliana, who's that? Oh, sorry. You said something. I just need to hide this. Uh, hide floating thing control. I cannot hide this. It's not, I'm trying to Okay, slides, sorry, slides go, you can use it, you click on it, slides go, okay, you can easily look for the templates that you like, for example, I like, I like, I like white, for example, so I just look for white, so there are examples of uh, free, don't, don't click on the premium one, obviously, just click for the free one, like without the crown, and then let's say you take this one, you like this one, and then you can just click uh, download on the on the uh, on the right side of this. I cannot see because uh, it's blocking my view. Yeah, this one, PowerPoint. You can just download it and then you can edit what you need. Okay. Same goes to Slides Carnival. It's it's. I think it's a very important resources at the moment that that is necessary to share. All right. And the other thing is Padlet. Padlet. I like, I like, I enjoy using Padlet. Okay. 
Is it as easy as Canva? To me, is even easier than Canva. Because Canva, yes, Canva, you, uh, there's so much, you know, Canva is, you have to edit online. Uh, you can, I think, but it's not as easy as PowerPoint because I'm used to PowerPoint. So when you download as PowerPoint, for example, this one, yeah, when you download PowerPoint, it save as PowerPoint. So you can edit it. Oh, yes, madam. I found this one already. It's really look interesting and new thing that like, that I found a lot of PowerPoint that mm -hmm. like to summarize already in the mm -hmm. medical information, like everything, blah, 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 that look interesting. Thank yeah. you so much. For example, <clears throat> that I, I downloaded this design. Uh, that design, they will give you like, this is, this is a, the template, yeah? When you download, they will give you, there, there's so many uh, designs. So let's say you don't want this, you don't like this design, you can always delete it as, as if as it's a, as if it's, it's a slide, you know, like for Canva, you, you, it's hard for me to adjust. Some people prefer Canva, but I prefer, I, I, I enjoy using slides, Carnival or uh, slides school. All right, just, just uh, some sharing about that. Okay, are we ready to continue? Yeah. Uh, for today, we will... Oh, I forgot to introduce. Uh, today is World Hearing Day. Wait, can you see this panel, actually? Oh, yes, you can see it. Mm, that black dot, isn't it? There's a black strip in front of you, isn't it? Am I correct? Do you yes, see? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I think I need to share in a different way. Stop share. I'll share a PowerPoint instead. Okay. Now you can't see that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's gone. That's the thing with um, online uh, session. You have to keep on trying which works. Uh, all right, today is World Hearing Day. So, you know, uh, the World Health Organization uh, recognized 3rd of March as um, World Hearing Day. Uh, this is, uh, oh gosh, what happened? Suddenly I was kicked out. All right. This is um, a day, uh, an effort made by WHO World Health Organization to um, to promote yeah to to uh, to promote awareness about uh, deafness about uh, disability about hearing importance of hearing and um, how it affects, it's this is from health perspective okay from health perspective and how it uh, Implica uh, have implication on our daily uh, routine. Okay, so uh, please uh, feel free to sh share the share share it with your colleague, maybe friends. You know, just just uh, tweet something about today about hearing. Do you know? Did you know that? You know, I think it's important because as I I said yesterday, there are not many people who are in this field. Yeah, whatever you're doing, special education. Imagine uh, Facebook friends, I don't know, if, if, if you want to calculate um, number of friends. Let's say you have the most number of friends on Facebook, which is 5,000. Imagine 5,000 friends you have. Obviously, you have more. Uh, let's say even you have 5,000. Uh, 5,000 of your friends are doing special education. Okay, let's just do, do a quick calculation for an introduction. Okay, 5,000 of your friends and you yourself are doing special education. Okay, let's divide that into the total population of your country. Okay, let's say Malaysia, 32 million. Can we have a number? How much, how, how much, is, percent, how much is the percentage? So 5,000 divided by... 32 million. You know how to calculate that percentage? Okay. Times 100. If it's 32 million. Yeah. So that's 0 
percent of Malaysian population involved in special education research. That is very little. It's not even one percent. You know what I mean? So if you want to calculate, of course, it, it you more. It's more. You know. But uh, what I'm saying, I'm trying to get you to it. Um, people who are actually working in this field is very minority. So whatever you're doing, please make sure um, you're doing it for a bigger community, which is the, your, your country, so your states probably, uh, your family members, okay? It's if the, the number is even smaller for bigger populations such as Indonesia. You know how many, how many people in, in, uh, in, in Indonesia? Indonesian, any, any Indonesians you want to respond? How, much, how many is your population? You can type on the chat box if you don't want to unmute. Uh, about 200 million people more. 232, if I'm not mistaken. 232 million. Yeah. And Malaysia, we have like 32 and they have like 230. So we are talking about a massive impact that we can make uh, if we share just a very little thing. So this is important because we're at working online nowadays, you have to be uh, careful with what you're writing, you know, that hopefully whatever you're sharing is a good sharing rather than saying um, unnecessary things. Okay. All right, let's move on. Um, okay, today's activity, activities. We will look into uh, two skills, uh, which are reading and writing uh, critically. So reading, um, academic writing is a skill. It is a concept, but it is a skill, you know, like uh, something like sewing or, you know, um, eating, even eating is a skill. You know, you, you, when you have a baby, you don't simply give the baby rice or noodles or whatever. You first feed them with milk. The very foundation of it, you know, just, just start slow. And then later on, oh, they can eat soft food. And then later on, oh, they can eat solid. And then they can eat, you know, more later on. And then now they can eat peanuts. You know, do you, they can eat first they, they have they can eat with supervision now they can eat uh, whatever they want you know for example even they can eat spicy food so um same goes to reading and writing yeah it's a skill if this is the first ever in your life ever heard the word reading critically and writing critically don't be overwhelmed like oh gosh I got so much to do no one step at a time. You've got a whole life to learn this um, because it's, it's, uh, some, it needs practice. You know, if, if you're not used to it, um, uh, it will take some time. And it, it's more challenging if you are reading it and writing in a language that you are not used to. Second language, third language, even fourth language. Yeah. All right. So in reading critically, we will explore um, the issues in uh, special needs, uh, special education needs. I, I use the short form of SEN because it's too long to put on the slide, but it, it, it means uh, special educational needs. Yeah? The name is contested. Somebody don't like the name, somebody uh, disagree with it, but it's just for the sake of this presentation, it's easy for me to use the word SEN. Okay, issues in inclusive education. I, I put it uh, in, I use IE acronym as an acronym. <clears throat> and then in the reading critically section part, I name it as part, uh, we will do some reading strategies and management. And ho hopefully we have a second part where we do writing critically and doing some writing exercise, hopefully, okay? Okay, yesterday I asked some uh, I asked uh, participants to respond to a mobile project. Uh, uh, an object, take a picture of an object that represents academic writing to you. Okay, why I asked you to do this? Because academic writing is not, there is no shape of academic writing. 
you know, if you have a pen, okay, it's it's clear that this is pen. Okay, I repeat myself myself because academic writing is something that that is quite abstract. You can see the text, but it can mean different for different people. All right. Interesting sharing by Dressler. Dressler, Sandra? Do we have Dressler, Sandra? Are you here? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Thank you Hello. for sharing. So uh, what do I call you? Dressler? You can call me Dresh, uh, Dresh of Hogan. Dresh. Okay, Dresh. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Kuching, Sarawak. Kuching. Okay. So Dresh said, uh, academic writing is like a headphone. It acts as a medium to help their learners or researchers to listen and understand well on the subject matter. Yeah, you can define or interpret when, whenever people ask, so what is academic writing? You can just say, oh, um, academic writing is like, it's a writing, but you know, you can also use headphones as an analogy. Okay, we have Haya Sanibu. Sanibu, Sanibu, do I pronounce your name correctly? Do we have uh, Hayas? Is Hayas in? Not yet? Yes, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, Hayas. Do you want to introduce yourself? Where are you from? I'm from Thailand. Thailand. Which yes. part of Thailand? I'm from Sukla. Okay, I don't know how to South pronounce South Thailand. That. Okay. Thank you. I cannot pronounce that, but <laughs> I'm just going to say uh, interesting that you probably go into your car and decided, oh, that looks like academic writing. I don't know, maybe uh, that looks like a car camera. Yeah, the back car, the front car and the back part, back camera. Yeah. OK, so it's like a camera. So uh, academic writing uh, used to record and collect the data with real situations. Yes. If it's not real, it's not academic. It's, uh, what do you call that thing? Like stories, probably. Imagination story. Um, uh, imagination um, stories, yeah? If, you, if it's not real. Okay. Next, we will look into Muhammad Cairo bin Uthman. Do we have Cairo? Yes, I'm here. Yes, thank you. <laughs> It's interesting because very short, um, uh, uh, Cairo said um, academic writing to me is like a tree, you know, because it grows. So and that like we can nature and nature that thing. Nature and nurture, well done. Okay, it's interesting that he used this word as if academic writing is alive, you know. It is only if you nurture it. If you live it, what happened to the tree, it dies. Okay, so um, interesting uh, analogy of academic writing. All right, moving on. Um, I cannot afford to share everybody, but those are very interesting sharing. I appreciate the, the, the feedbacks and the, the photos that you reflected upon. Okay. Okay, reading critically, uh, we will look into issues. Uh, yeah, let's do some interaction through Mentimeter. Everyone knows, have, have everyone heard of Mentimeter? You can just Google uh, Mentimeter and then key in this number, 20951921. Or you can QR, you can scan this code. I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna change, stop share because I wanna share the Mentimeter page in a while, okay? Okay, I'm just gonna share. Uh, one second. Uh, Mentimeter, are you in? Everyone seen? Can you can you see? Uh, can you click on the? Oh my gosh, this is hard because it's blocking my view. Okay. Present. Uh, please go to www.menti.com and use the code 20951921. 
And then please answer the question. Can you do it? Is it working? We should fill in a word, yes. Anyone? I haven't seen any response. Yes, availability of fun. Okay, what is the issues in assessing research? Try, maybe some of you, you're, you're not using, you never use Menti. It's a good platform to uh, share, to get feedback from your participants online. Okay, growing, economy. So far, we only talk about money. Limited sources, education's background, very good. Keep going. Go to menti.com and fill in 2095. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, 95192, if you can, for those who can. It's okay. It's just a... Or you can write your answer in the chat box. For those who have problem to participate in the online page, you can just write what is the issue in okay. assessing. Madam, I think, Madam, I think like uh, exception uh, apart from this, I think like um, issue in assessing, I think target group of reader. Who target is the reader, on. target group? Yeah, okay, target, target group, group of reader. Can you, can you write that on the chat chat box so that I can uh, read it later? Okay. Okay. Thank you. For those who want to write on the chat box, it's also possible. What is the issue in assessing? Yes. Uh, reader research yeah, in low and middle income countries. Regions, I don't say countries, because in some countries, you have good access, but different state or different region, you have a very low access. So it's not about countries, it's about regions. Okay, limited sources. Okay, budgets for research, culture. Social, I can see locality. Maybe some big problem at the moment is still economy, sources, money, social. I don't know what social means. Family history. Those are still the, the bigger issues. No, you don't have to sign up. You can just key in the 20951921. Join Menti. Maybe you can just not join. Maybe, I don't know the right word for that. Okay, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Okay, from here, I think I just, uh, how do I save this picture? Okay, you can just write there. Demographic information, uh, demographic. Yes, demographic means uh, geographical. Is that what you mean? Do you mean geography? Demographic, or oh, like the background. Yeah. Uh, how do I stop this? I think I just click this. All right. Uh, I'm sure I'm not sure how to do. Is this done? Yeah. We're done. So as you can see, our um most of us say the biggest number, the biggest um. Picture says limited sources, money, uh, family background, knowledge. Yes, I can read that. Language barrier, support from the government, all of it, all of it. Yeah. But how do I um see this? Maybe I should just give me a second. This probably. I cannot exit. Yep, got it. So let me just uh, go back to our slide, okay? This interaction. Okay, 
issues in assessing reading as I suspected uh, nobody said <laughs> permission to academic journals yeah um, yeah permission to academic journals is actually the core reason for this is because of money yeah we don't have enough sources to pay because academic journals are expensive very expensive um just try to share. I cannot see you, but that's fine. Okay. Um issues. Uh since you don't have access, so I'm not surprised. Uh that's why there are not many research can be done. Limited, even for those who are in postgraduate program, who are doing masters and PhD in universities, esteemed universities in Malaysia, uh, still we have limited access. Agree? Anyone who's doing study, PhD, masters? So we have to find alternative. Google Scholar is developed, has been developed to support in this sense. Yeah. A lot of people disagree with Google Scholar, but if that is the only sources, why not? Okay. Uh, if you are in China, do you know that you cannot access Google? So there is a discrimination there already. They are blocked from these piles of knowledge, okay? Because Google is not allowed in China because of all sorts of reasons, okay? Language barrier, number two. Uh, no need to explain, I think, because it's obvious. Some of these are um, mainly in English, good journals, because they dominate uh, the, the world, yeah, the research world. So some of it uh, because, uh, because it's their language. You know. uh, how to solve it? I suggest we practice and collaborate. Collaboration is key. You can collaborate with an uh, English teacher, for example. Collaborate with um, those in uh, other countries, which is very helpful. You know, sometimes if you write something, you can always contact it you can always contact email just email professor this this professor let's say you you read his work and then you think his work is amazing you want to work with him just be brave you know you can always uh, email them and say look i am a student phd student for example if you are listening to this or master student be brave to just contact them look i am writing about this topic um so I, I, I read a lot that you have written a lot on this, on your work. Maybe you can advise whatever I have written. So send it to them. You know, don't send everything. Or maybe you can email them, ask for permission first if they are interested to read. And then give, give like an abstract. See what they think. It will be very helpful to help us improve. Okay? Overloaded information. Obviously, now, if you Google just a word on Google, you'll find not just million, you'll find billions of things. That's just on Google. You know, there are a lot more things that is outside Google. So uh, what do you do? Of course, you have to select, yeah, choose which is relevant and then manage. That's what we're gonna do today, okay? All right, uh, before we do the practical part, I just want to bring us back to the complexity of uh, special education and inclusive education. When we are trying to understand um, what's happening in the world of special education, we have to try to go back to the concept of uh, whatever that we're looking for. Like, for example, if we want to understand uh, special needs, we have to understand disability. 
how do how do we define disability? There is no right or wrong answer. It's not just about deafness, blind, learning disability. It's more complex. Okay. Um, and it's still the debate is still going on because it's an it's a it's an abstract concept. As the world is changing, especially after the pandemic, how people experiencing disability change. So whatever argument you read 10 or 20 years ago has changed just like two months ago. Especially now we, we have received some, some countries have received a vaccine, vaccination. How is this related to the experience by people with disability? Okay. Same goes to the idea of education. How do you define education? Is education about attending schools from primary to secondary and higher education? What about those who never go to school? For example, our grand grandparents, for example, they never been to education at uh, to school. But are they are they dumb? Were they dumb? No, they are more smart than us. They did a lot more innovation than we ever did. We just sit here and you know listen to look at Netflix, for example. You know, so we are so called educated people. How educated is educated? How do you define uh, someone who receives education? Okay, some some uh, ideas. Okay, there are a lot of models, theories, and conceptual framework that you need to look in the literature whenever you want to uh, explore these terms. Yeah, because we are social scientists. If you are a pure scientist, like scientists in the lab, you do something, you know, something on the microscope, you saw something, it's easy because not, I don't say that it's easy. I mean, it's there. You can see that uh, the thing grow, but with knowledge, you know, you cannot see your children and then see that the child's knowledge is growing. You know, it's different for social scientists when they do research, okay? Uh, the second point is about differences in context. I think we've discussed this yesterday a little bit about how different countries have different policies. Uh, even, even in the same country, you have the same policy, but you know, resources are different. Kuala Lumpur have a different resources than Kuching, for example. Kuching may have the same uh, resources than Johor, for example. So uh, it's important to acknowledge uh, the differences in this. And what's uh, the third issue, I think, is identifying key issues here. Key issues mean what is the most significant? There's so much to explore. But how do you decide what to explore? So that's another question uh, to think about when you talk about issues in special education. There's so much, so much. You, you can look into the curriculum, you can look into the uh, uh, motivation, you can look into um, collaboration between teachers and parents, you can look into the policies. What is it that you want to explore? You have to be able to identify that okay can follow so far am i too fast okay okay thank you for responding because yesterday i got a feedback somebody said i was too too fast so i i tried to be a little bit slow but it will be a bit boring <laughs> just if you think it's it's getting uh sleepy just wake up and shake your head something okay um, this is uh, an author from uh, England, uh, Tom Shakespeare. I really like his work. I understand so much about disability theories from him. Yeah, If you have the capacity uh, to buy the book, buy the book. Or you can um, you know, post it on your Facebook um, and then say, look, I learned that this is a good book. Can you raise funds for me to buy this book? You know, you don't know that like people maybe want to give you as a birthday present. I find it, it, it's hard to understand, but 
uh, because it involves theories, a lot of theories, but um, manageable, right? Like uh, if you are really doing research in disability studies, um, I, I would suggest you to look for this book. Even if you can't afford to buy his book, he wrote a lot of articles and journals. Uh, sorry, he wrote a lot of articles, not in journals, yeah? Um, um, so uh, it's, it can be free, some of it. If you just Google Tom, Sh Tom Shakespeare disability, you'll find a lot of his work. Um, he, he is very critical. Um, his, his work can be harsh to some people uh, because he, he looked at it from, a, from, from, from academic perspective. He himself has a disability. He has a spina bifida, I think. So he was born with it. Uh, he's married, he has a child. I think he, his child is also uh, having um, a disability uh, because he, he's he was married to, to someone who, with disability as well. Okay. Um, alternatively, you can look for uh, articles. This is by Alina Zajadas. This is just an example. I don't see Sorry. any this. Yeah. We couldn't see your slide. Oh. Are you sharing any screen? Oh gosh. Um, thank you for no, um, letting me know that. It's okay. I cannot, I didn't realize <laughs> it was gone. Okay. Can you see now? Okay, success. Mm, I can't. Give me two seconds. Let me explore that. Maybe I need to click this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. That alternatively, you can um, you can look for uh, these articles in 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 scholar, Google Scholar. Um, disability debates, for example. Um, disability, if you look into disability, meaning that what I'm trying to say, the keyword that you use on Google Scholar must be, uh, must be about concept. How do you conceptualize motivation? How do you conceptualize intervention? How do you conceptualize, um, uh, I don't know, a transition program, for example? How do you conceptualize reading program? What is the definition definition of of this you must it must be based on some form of concept because a uh, conceptual framework of some some frame to to define your thing because in social science we are dealing with abstract thing you know something that you cannot see so you have to be able to define that the first thing the very among the very first step okay Moving on, uh, if you are interested to look into uh, inclusion and inclusive education, these are some of the find my findings from my, my research. Uh, diverse discourse. Inclusion is complex and there are many definitions. This is just, uh, these are just some of it. I believe there are many more. Yeah? Number one, we, uh, a lot of researchers, when they write about inclusive or inclusion, they talk about either special classroom integration program and inclusive. So they define inclusive or inclusion in, in this context, whether the child is in special classroom or the special school or they are in integration. I don't know if other, other uh, countries have this integration program where you have a school and then you have like a small classroom. In Malaysia, we call it integration program. You might have a different name in your country. And then for those who, who are start or learning in between mainstream and uh, this integration classroom, we call it inclusive education program. Yeah, a special center, for example. Okay, number two, uh, we have inclu inclusive and exclusive argument. Yeah, if you this course means uh, wachana in Malay. This course is like a like a discussion. Okay, when you when you read something, you can categorize. Okay, these people talk about this. 
these people talk about this. So the second group of scholars, they argue, they, they talk about um, inclusive and exclusive. So meaning that for those who are in gender-based school, girls schools, boys schools, Islamic schools, uh, what else you have? Uh, Chinese schools, for example, those are in the argument about inclusive and exclusive. So you have another form of education that is exclusive to certain group of people. Yeah, and some says it uh, it is unnecessary, but uh, the argument goes on. Okay, it's still going on. All right, number three, uh, it's about entitlements, not needs, meaning that some people argue it's not about whether we should do, whether or not the child uh, are, are going, doing well or not, but it's about um, whether the child uh, the child should be in inclusive education it's because it's their right to be so they go on talking about rights 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 right they're going to use a lot of human rights uh, act uh, disability rights act so they don't care whether it's working or not or what's happening it's not that they don't care but they thought uh, the argument is uh, because it's their right and as as um argued by what's his name Tom Shakespeare, it's about disability rights and wrongs, yeah? So he is against rights. Uh, some of the rights are, are not suitable. It's rights, because these human rights, uh, there is an argument, say it's, uh, it's being developed by certain people and a certain group of people. And then whether or not these people represent the whole nation in the world, you know, because it's it's elective. You know, some people might say, uh, "No, uh, I don't think that's that's right." So that could be wrong, even even if it's a, a right. Okay. Next, number four, it's about um, transforming school for all. Yeah. So some says, uh, remember, uh, so let's say. Um, Okay, yesterday we had a, a, a disagreement between the mother and the, who was it? Researcher or something. Probably the researcher. Inclusion, uh, the parents, activists, and the teacher. Yeah, the teacher. So in, as a, in some regions, you know, some poor regions, not just rural areas, sometimes you, the, geographically, it's not possible for you to have many schools. Yeah, if it's in the city, yes, you have a big population. It's fine if you want to build school A, school B, school C within the area because obviously you need more with in high population. But in certain areas, if you have one village here, one village there, one village there, there's not much resources. You can afford to ha only have one school, one school for all. So the child is either in the school or out of the school. If they, they say, oh, he got a disability, we cannot let you in. But if the child is in, the school need to be transformed to, to meet the needs of everybody. So let's say in village A speaking language A, village B speaking language B, for example. In Philippines, you got lots of islands, yeah? So it can happen in one school, you suddenly have five languages. It's, it's normal in that, that area. So how school can um, be transformed so that everybody, regardless of their ability or language or background, can, can, can provide education that meets the needs of everybody. The argument here is, if that school, that's one school, with very limited limited resources can be transformed to meet the needs of everybody in that area why schools in big cities with many resources cannot transform and being excluded exclusive to certain group of people only so that is another argument for example uh male and school from uh uk 
he argued in this sense. He, he, he is a strong argument for transforming school for all rather than look just into inclusive uh, for those with disabilities. So uh, a lot, obviously, uh, many disability um, related organizations disagree with it because if we don't identify who are these children, we will lose sight. You know, we don't know who are uh, who need uh, um, uh, tailored tailored uh, specific uh, needs in in the sense that is relevant to their disability. You can be very different, diff, uh, difficult uh, discussion. And then we have another uh, discussion discourse about mainstreaming. You know, we don't use mainstreaming in Malaysia. You know, it's not common. Uh, but the idea is moving children with disabilities in the mainstream. So that's why they call mainstreaming. They make people become mainstream. A lot of people disagree with that because um, it's not about placement. You know, you can be in that mainstream class and then you are not learning anything. So mainstreaming is not necessarily a good thing. So that's why uh, people say it's really inclusive mainstream. Is 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 being in mainstream classroom inclusion? Some say there's nothing. Uh, there's nothing inclusive in that inclusive classroom. Yeah. Okay. Number six. Um, difficulties in learning. So rather than look at disability, uh, some scholars. Uh, discuss uh, discuss uh, inclusion in the sense that it's not about yeah not about okay let's move away from disability let's look at difficulties in learning maybe because uh, they are from poor uh, family background you know they've never been to preschools suddenly seven years old they have to attend school um they know they don't know they don't have basic uh, literacy skills so uh, how do we go from there? Uh, how do we provide education that is inclusive to, to those who are facing difficulties in learning? Okay? And difficulties in learning, it's not just about um, uh, literacy, you know, even at adult, adulthood, you know, adult life, um, uh, people struggle to continue uh, learning, lifelong learning, for example. So, um, uh, do we think our do our government just think, or not just the government, but do we ourselves think our learning stop when we completed our uh, degree, for example? Uh, actually, uh, no, we are learning, but how do we recognize that we are learning? For example, what you're doing at the moment is some some form of. Um, lifelong learning activity. So some argument about whether adults, other adults or other professionals continue learning. Okay. Number seven, additional support needs. So instead of uh, looking into uh, disability, again, this, these people look at uh, all types of children. Uh, street children, uh, street children are those who are homeless, like they, they live on the street. Uh, and undocumented children, okay, whether or not, because the sustainable development goal says uh, we want uh, to ensure uh, education that is inclusive and equitable for all children. So it's not just those uh, who, who can go to school, it's for everybody. And these children mostly are not in school. How do we support? Okay, if you're interested. Well, I think we we need to we need to include uh, inclusion in our our work after this because that's where we're moving. We're moving towards uh, inclusive education. All right. So, uh, so much, isn't it? I don't know if you understand. You probably uh, um, absorbing too much information. It's a lot, yeah. These are very diff uh, difficult um, argument. Um, and when you start reading, you will start feel overwhelmed. You know, overwhelmed? Yeah? So much overloaded with 
readings. So how do you manage? Ask questions. Yeah, it's very important for you to read selectively. Yesterday we learned about read with questions. Yeah. Even with one sentence, you have so many questions, isn't it? So now you, you realize, oh gosh, I need to write these piles of reading. How do you start? Ask questions. What aspects did I find most important or interesting in this reading? What did it? What about it? Okay, number two, you ask. How did the readings relate to my own experiences of my thoughts? Okay. And then number three, how did the readings relate to other things I have read? Okay, let's say you, you've read something uh, before, maybe you can kind of try to uh, make, uh, find the correlation between the two. Okay. And then you have what questions or disagreements do I have about aspects of the readings? Um, Come up with questions. Let's say you read something, you don't believe everything that you read, you 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 ask questions there and then like on the on the on that particular reading. Okay. Uh is everything is everyone all right so far? Somebody raise their hand. Good. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you for responding. I'm just checking. We have finished the first part, almost the first part of our uh, session. Okay, this is some tips. Yeah, uh, I use um table to sort out my reading because you are reading so many. Uh, you need to keep track. What have you re read so far? So you can use this table, for example, you can um, have title, author year, research aims, you know, subject, sites, methods, main findings. What is important is this box. How relevant is this to me and the rating? I think it's important. Let's say you want to see, oh, this is, this is okay, but not really important. You put star there, okay? Uh, you can just give one star. But if you think, oh, this is very good. I need to read it again. So you put really, really. Because if you're reading 30 articles, you might forget. Oh, uh, what was it about? At least, at least by having this document, you'll be able, oh, yeah, I remember this paper. Oh, yeah, I remember this paper. Okay? By the time, uh, by, by, by the time you have read uh, many other, other, other papers, uh, at least uh, you have some idea. Okay, um, practical strategies. Uh, if you are doing um, research, it's important for you to have a cloud storage. Very important because, uh, you know, file can damage, you know, a lot of things can happen. Uh, put your uh, materials on Dropbox or G Drive, iCloud, OneDrive, for example. Just, just make sure you put everything on cloud. Okay. Uh, have anyone heard of reference managers such as Mendeley, EndNote? Anybody? Um, I have, I have been using EndNote, EndNote? but I okay. forgot, but I forgot the methods right now mm -hmm. <laughs> because, like, I think it is very good. So EndNote can range automatically when you can like browse or the typing yeah. um any relevant at that like code uh coding uh automatically yes i will teach uh, i will share some of this uh right after this i prefer mm -hmm. mendeley i use mendeley because yeah EndNote, i have i have i have been used that one mendeley okay and not need license if you are okay. at university you have you have access because normally university buy and note for the students, but Mendeley is free. So whenever you finish your study, you can still use Mendeley. Okay, look for it. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Okay, number three is uh, managing long documents. So let's say if you are working on PhD master student, you are working on 20,000 words, 100,000 words, you have to use 
management of long documents. What is this? Google. Uh, just, just look at YouTube search. There are a lot of um, a lot of uh, tutorials on, on how to uh, manage long documents. I cannot afford to do this today, but I can show you um, what it did. Yeah? So for example, uh, you know, it can help you to uh, explore, to, to scroll up and down. You, you cannot afford to scroll 200 pages, you know, you know what I mean? So this management of long document is necessary. Okay. And then um, I want to show you Mendeley. Give me two seconds. Just need to share. Okay, this is Mendeley. Can you see now? All right, Mendeley is where you keep all your references, all your readings. For example, I have, you can add folders on the left side. Yeah. So let's say I've got my PhD box here. And then I got other topics, for example, COVID-19 and disability. You just, just keep your resources here. Where you when, when you have when you download Mendeley, it will be empty, obviously. Yeah. You can uh, create a folders on the left, and then you can add add articles here. For example, if you uh, of course you have to download the journal first, yeah, on 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 your PC. So you keep the file in your Google Drive, keep your uh, file in your Dropbox or OneDrive or whatever, or iCloud, um, and then uh, upload it here. What's good about this is that you can search. For example, I want to look for uh, papers about cochlear implants, for example. Uh, so I, I, it helps me to browse the whole articles that talk about cochlear implants. So I don't have to, uh, I, I, or maybe I want to look for uh, issues such as uh, deaf identity, for example. Um, so sorry, madam, interrupt mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. And that show that this reference right now is a universal like um, a pattern APA or not, or a bandwidth no. references. No, no. This is not yet. We haven't been there. It's just where you keep the references. Not yet. We uh -huh. haven't go into formatting. Okay. Okay. This is just where you keep, you collect save all your readings. Okay. okay, what's good about this? Let's say, okay, you want to cite, uh, let me stop share, okay. See the benefit of it? I think the best thing about uh, reference manager is when you, um, let me share screen. Okay, you have this, okay. um, let's say you have, um, okay, you have the table just now, remember? When you do some readings, maybe you want to put themes. Can you see? Yeah, you can see. Okay, you have yeah. theme number one. For example, you have concepts of inclusion. So let's say you find the article, you fill in the boxes, and then theme number two, you put communication approaches for uh, deaf children. So you read some more. And then you have theme number three, let's say you have issues in deaf education. Okay? So. Okay, um, I see. Here, when you write something, let's say you write something and then you want to say that this is by, um, you click on this reference. There's, uh, the, this is not a workshop on Mandele. You can go to YouTube, but I just want to show, give an introduction about it. You can insert citation. For example, uh, I said that just now I look for deaf identity. Yeah. So maybe this person talk about, oh yeah, deaf studies. No, I don't want deaf studies. I want deaf identity. Uh, uh, deaf studies. Ah, deafness and ethnicity. Okay, let's click on that. Preggle. Okay. It will help me to uh, see this thing. When we insert citation, immediately they will help me to cite. But what type of citation? Like AS, I can change to here. So just now it says American APA. I can change it to Chicago, for example. And then I can refresh. Okay, it's the same. Maybe I can change it to uh, Vancouver. 
some uh, health may be different. Ah, uh, see, Vancouver, uh, only one number one. They don't want the name. Okay, where can I get the references? You have to go to Google Google Scholar, and then download. Or if you have access to Scopus or um. Uh, oh, I see. At like um, depend on up right how we choose the pattern of yeah. references. Yeah, the pattern uh, of depends on us. Choose. It's not universal. Just like APA right now in the two thousand eighteen APA style. Yeah, you can add more styles. So it's just an example. If you want to know more about Mendeley, you have to Google on on Facebook on on YouTube for for technical technicalities. Wow, uh, a that looks interesting a lot. Yeah, okay, <clears throat> here, for example, when you have done your writing, let's say you write more here, and then you write more, and then you cite more. For example, you want to cite somebody, let's say you cite uh, Susie, okay? Uh, for example, you cite this paper, okay? So you got two references. Let's say you cite somebody else. Okay, let's say you cite, yourself let's see if i begin okay uh, okay these i know this paper so these are my paper okay so you got three references in your uh, work okay okay in your paragraph and then at the end of your work obviously you need to list the references yeah this is academic writing where you need to um cite your your the readings that you you use you can the mendeley use this the word insert bibliography it's not bibliography but they call it bibliography so mendeley help helps us to um okay this is not because um this is at the bottom for the next activity so you can just disregard this one okay this is the great thing about uh, mendeley Mm. Okay, so uh, if you are not sure how to use it, go to YouTube. There are a lot of tutorials uh, on how to use Mendeley, but I think this is very important for you to learn now. Okay, all right, moving on. Uh, where were, was I? I was saying um, we need reference manager, we need to manage long documents. Um, maybe I can share a little bit. My thesis. Uh, so can you see now? Not yet. It's loading. Give me two seconds. It's a long document. It was my PhD. So this was my PhD uh, document. You can click on the view button. Click on the navigation pane. View tab, and then there is a navigation pane. Okay. If you have use the functions managing long documents, this will come out where you can click on the chapter one, you know, chapter one, it's, if you click on the title, go to home, it's set as heading one. In long documents, you don't play around with this site. You don't play, change the font tab. You don't play here. You play here. This, this, I cannot, this one. This type style. Okay. For more information about this, how to do it, go to YouTube, search managing long documents. Very important. For example, I have 250 pages here. How do you scroll up and down? You cannot scroll up and down. It's crazy to do that. So please, if you're using, uh, if you are doing masters and PhD you have to write at least 15,000 words uh, work, dissertation. Please don't use, um, uh, please do not underestimate the importance of using long documents uh, management. Okay, moving on. Um, this one. Uh, analysis with software. If you have heard Envivo, Atlas Ti, uh, they have, you have to pay. Uh, but if you cannot afford, you can always use Accent. Yeah. How to use, uh, why? Uh, it's not analysis of data. It's analyzing readings. 
let's say you have read this thing, you have read so many, yeah, in this table, you have hundreds of hundreds of readings. You can go to YouTube, search uh, analysis of readings using Excel. You know, they will teach you some tips and tricks on how to um, uh, find, uh, how to help you create themes of all your readings. Because so many, you know. And so I got a question in the chat box. Except Google Scholar, what are the sources to get the references? Um, uh, Google uh, Scopus, uh, but this okay. Um, there's some uh, complexity as as we discussed just now. The main issue in assessing research is because uh, a lot of us are not in organization that can afford to buy uh, research academic journals. So, um, Google Scholar is one that I know. Uh, if you're using Scopus, uh, I don't think, uh, if you're not on in university, you probably won't have access to it. Scopus, yeah. Uh, Taylor's and Swift at, at Scopus. These are, these are where they keep all the journals. But see, you have to log in. You know, you have to log in to, to find the paper. See? Unless you uh, find a free access, open access. So for now, I, I think Google Scholar is the only option. If somebody else have options, uh, feel free to add up. Yeah. But even in Google Scholar, you have to be very careful selecting in selecting um, resources. Let's say you want to see uh, COVID-19 education. Okay. Okay, so you got this on the right side. You got if if it's available here, meaning that you can access it. But if it's not here, meaning that maybe 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 you cannot access it. What's good about Google Scholar is that you can see that this paper have been cited how many times, and if you you find it hard, Mendeley or EndNote, you can always click on this symbol, and then they help you to share maybe APA style. You know, sometimes it's correct, sometimes it's not correct. Harvard style, Vancouver style. So uh, there are some suggestions on, on Google Scholar. Um, alternatively, if you try to find something and then you don't have access, um, contact, yeah, contact uh, your friends who are in university, connect with other people, make friends with people on this uh, workshop, for example, add them on Facebook maybe. Um, just that maybe you can collaborate together and maybe if you know uh, oh they are um, they are they have they are doing uh, postgraduate studies in university they have access maybe they can help you to get access to the paper okay moving on oh no of time writing critically so now we will move on to um, uh, this is a Johari window, yeah. So far, so good. I know I'm being fast because because those skills that I just uh, shared, you can Google on on YouTube. Let's say you've heard about Mendeley, you've heard about long document. Please, um, Google uh, how to use this uh, manager. Okay. Johari window. It's not a name. It's a combination of Joseph Luth and Harrington Ingham uh, model. Uh, normally, when we write, we tend to forget about others. We just write whatever we want to write. So I use Johari window to explain, you know, what is known to you and known to others is mutually understood, which is fine. You know, you want to say uh, the sky is blue. Yeah, mutually understood. But if you, if you, uh, if known, if it's known to, oh, did I get it wrong? Known to you, known to others. Okay, you don't know this. Yeah. Known, not known to self. Yeah, you don't know that, but somebody else know it. So it's your blind spot. Okay. Or this one, the red one. You you know it, but everybody else don't know it. It's a secret. For example, yesterday when we write, we read the word that was so boring. Yeah, that was so boring. 
when you come to it, when you suddenly read, read it on the on the whiteboard, that was boring. You you wonder what was boring, yeah. So only that person who write it know that that the word that refer to academic writing workshop, for example, okay. Mm, so if it's not known to others, it's as if it's a secret. So let's say when you write something and you write something that is uh, not known to others, people will wonder, what are you trying to hide here? Okay. All right. Uh, that's just an example of why some writing is not clear because uh, we assume, we make assumption that people know what we're talking about. Okay. Uh, moving on, we are looking into structuring paragraph and work. In a paragraph, there are two, two, two types here, two levels here. Okay. Um, at paragraph level, you need a, a, you need a topic sentence, a support sentences, and concluding sentence. This is um, language and linguistic part. You have to Google how to write a paragraph. Like there are a lot of exercises on how to improve, how development of a paragraph, a good academic writing paragraph. On the other hand, there's also about work, like the whole document that you want to write. Um, so you've got introduction part, and then you've got the sub themes. Yeah. And then towards the end, you have an argument about, um, about what is all of your uh, writing, okay? Uh, let's look at ACA. Uh, anyone want to read or should we just, should I just read? Okay, let's look at ACA, yeah? Malware, malware is short for malicious wear, which means computer programs that are designed to interfere with normal computing operations. There are two types of malware, self-replicating malware, uh, and then a worm, and then spyware. So there's two lah. Uh, malware, uh, okay, malware, spyware, uh, spyware, okay, other spyware programs. Okay, you have read this, okay? Uh, do you think this is academic writing? Is this academic writing? Can you trust the details? No, maybe. No? Who else? Anybody else? Anyone says yes? No? Everyone say no? No. There is no fact? No, it is a fact. Two main types of malware. It's a fact. But we don't know the source. Mm, the author. The source, yeah. Yeah. We don't know the source, but yeah. it's general knowledge. They, the sky is blue. Do you need a source? Do you need somebody to, do you need to cite something? There are two main types of malware. There are two main types of pen. Ball pen and what's the other pen? Ball pen and what's the other pen? Oh, let's not use pen. There are uh, two functions of scissors to cut to cut pieces of papers, for example, you know, there are some 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 sentences that is um I think we need a proof, something that study maybe. A study, okay. Actually, this is an academic writing. Okay, it falls under academic writing, but okay, there is a but there. It is called descriptive writing. There is another level because uh, you can write you can write beautifully like okay this is a short for uh, meaning that it's it's like a textbook you just share the knowledge. The problem with this is because uh, is it's not you know when you read this the next question that come to you is so what. <laughs> I don't know if you have this question, but it, when you read something that is like this, you were like, yeah, so what? So what? Malware have two, two types, okay? 
Okay, it is in is it introduction? It is introduction. Okay, there's another type of essay. Look at essay B. Okay. Malware attacks um can have serious consequences for individuals. Uh, see, when you read the first sentence, suddenly you feel, oh gosh, you know, like, oh, I need to be careful. Okay. Malware is short for malicious software, which means computer programs that are designed. The most significant consequences for individuals are financial loss and inversion. Okay. So it's still the same thing, but it's called analytical writing. So yesterday we discussed about academic writing, but we also learned today that academic writing itself is insufficient if you write descriptive writing. Okay? Because we there's so much to read. Yeah, we, we've learned that there's so much information in the literature. Okay. Uh, there's so much to read. So why, why when we write, we don't want to just describe things, okay? We, we describe things, but analytically, through analysis. We've done the analysis, then people will appreciate what we read, what we, what we write, okay? Because people don't have time to... To, to read everything. When you write like this, you know, it's important, but how is this relevant to me? What does this mean? So what if, if there are two types of malware? So what if there's a spyware that does not replicate itself? So what if the spyware looks like a worm? You know, but if you say malware can attack you, then you start to realize, oh gosh, I need to be careful. Oh, then you will you will realize oh there even a research by Zors and Tyler that say invasion from my privacy is another consequences identity theft you know like suddenly you were like oh gosh so then only people can appreciate your work all right are we good so far all right thank you corresponding. If there is no uh, text citation, must be a plagiarism. It can be plagiarism. It can be plagiarism. Plagiarism is another, you need a whole session on plagiarism. <laughs> so uh, Google plagiarism, good question. Um, for those who don't know how to spell it, it's, it's on the chat box. Somebody mentioned plagiarism. Plagiarism is when you copy from other texts and then, and then just put it there, you know? So we don't want to do that. We want to read and then we understand that and then, and then we analyze it. That's why we compare it with other readings. Then only we analyze it, okay? We understand it and then we, we, we try to make sense to it in our context, in Malaysia, as an individual, you know, like we try to look for, um, uh, ways that it interact relevant to us. Okay, synthesizing readings. Uh, should uh, should an analytical writing connecting to what happened here and now based on the fact? I would argue yes, because uh, depends on your purpose of writing. Because it, it has to be the thing that happened recently. You cannot refer to things that happened 20 years ago if it's not relevant because 20 years ago, there's no Facebook, for example. There's no access to Google. So um, whatever, whatever analytic, analytical writing has to be uh, what's happening only recently, some argued five, some argued 10 years. 10 years is old already. Some argued now with the pandemic, two years is the maximum. So uh, it depends on what is it that you want to argue. What, I mean, what, what topic you are talking about. If you're talking about um, employment, for example, it's still an issue 50 years ago, 20 years ago, it's still an issue. 10 years ago, it's still an issue. Five days ago, it's still an issue. So some issues are 
unfortunately everlasting. <laughs> I don't want to use. I hope these issues resolve eventually. Uh, but but you know, um, some are difficult issues. Okay, did I understand uh, answer that question? Okay. All right. Should we move on? Uh, how many slides? Addressing issues. Oh, okay. I want to uh, share this. So you've done some readings. Um, let's say you've got all this. How do you put that into words? Isn't it? Let's do that now. Um, this one. Okay. So let's say you've got uh, your team. Yeah, you've collected hundreds of readings. And then you realize there are some trends. You know trend? Trends. Maybe trends. Trends like patterns. Trends. Yeah. Patterns. Like, oh, this article belongs to this. This article belongs to this group. You know, it will change. Eventually, you realize this reading one, reading two, reading three, reading hundred. I mean, you can move this around. And then you put that under the theme of concepts of inclusion. Okay, and then you read more, and then you've got another group which is um, a communication approach for deaf children. Okay, so you collected uh, how deaf children communicate, how this and how that uh, approach A, approach B, what are the uh, pros and cons, what are the evidences. Uh, what is the challenges if I were to uh, do this in Malaysia, for example, is this relevant to my context? And then let's say I put an example here. We have uh, three papers. Okay. I've got paper number. Oh, oh, I know now because uh, it's Vancouver. Number four because it's Vancouver. Uh, let me just click on APA just so that I can see the author's name. All right. So um, I've read this D. Right. Uh, 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 McLeod, Stockback, Guadino paper, and then I say, oh, changing schools for the deaf, updating educational settings for children in twenty first century. Okay. So I I I look at it and then I say, oh. The paper try to explore the transformation. Oh, oh, it's in Belgium. Okay, Belgium. Right, Belgium. And then, oh, it's a review paper. What is a review paper? Review paper is, uh, it's not a, uh, there's no data. Okay. There's no data per se, like they don't do data collection. But there is data, no data collection. But some may argue, the data that the paper is using is the previous paper. For example, uh, systematic review, they collected 50 papers on that topic and then they analyzed the 50 papers. Uh, some say it's, it's some form of data. So, but this review paper means there is, okay, maybe I shouldn't uh, just, just say it's, it's a review paper, okay? as compared to experiment, for example. And then I have, oh, the main findings, I read it and then I realize, oh, the special school for the deaf became a service center for the deaf community. Okay, meaning that, oh, uh, uh, school for the deaf is not just, it's not just where they go to school, but the parents can come to ask questions, community can come to the school to learn sign language, for example, it become a deaf uh, center, okay, in Belgium. And then I said, I asked myself, oh, how is this relevant to me? Hmm. And then I said, oh, special education integration program in Malaysia, maybe can act as a center for mainstream school. Maybe I just write whatever I want to write, okay. Uh, and then I read another paper. I said, oh, development of deaf identity. Oh, this paper, oh, in South Africa. Very interesting. Oh, they, they want to explore development of deaf identity um, in Malaysia, for example. Uh, so when I read this, obviously, I have to read more papers. Is this happening? So this box should allow you, should open up your mind. 
okay to read more should inspire to to find more readings from this you want i would say oh then if in belgium they do this in their school how is malaysia doing how is indonesia doing how is asean countries doing are we um are we uh, similar to european area so this box should inspire you to look for other uh, other uh, topics is it just about special education okay next uh, i read about uh, guadino oh i said oh modifying classroom environment oh this is about environment identify characteristic of good environment for the children oh usa rich country okay oh they did experiment and then i said here uh, modifications are necessary this is important key point uh, oh yes this maybe this is a good point for me to uh, to for teacher trainer okay maybe i can say oh, teacher trainer for example all right now you've read all these paper all these hundreds of papers we need to write it down let's say I realized from the reading that there are many dilemmas because some says, oh, the school need special school need to be uh, need to be transformed. And then I learned here, oh, we need to develop deaf, deaf identity, but also there are also modifications for uh, in the environment. So I wrote a topic here, dilemmas in educating deaf children in special school for the deaf. All right. Um, this is just example. In the first sentence, I said, oh, a special school for the deaf, or maybe I should show this first. Okay, let's say you've got the paper here. Okay, changing school for the deaf, updating and setting. So you read this paper, you highlight. On, on Mendeley, you can, uh, you can select and then highlight. You can even change the color of the highlighter. Let's say you want to put this green yellow blue you can it's up to you and it's cool you know like uh i stop using uh i stop print my papers i no longer print papers because i was able to um select as if it's a piece of paper okay so i don't want to highlight this because it's not relevant Okay, so I read this, so I put some point, okay, and then I read. What's another good thing about Mendeley is that you can read side by side. You know, oh, okay, this one. Or you can even uh, open it, you can put it, you know, some people prefer to read simultaneously. It's fine. It's, it's good if you can do that. It's a good skill. Okay, and then I have the Guardino paper. So I find, oh, okay, this, this is the paper. Result shows functional relationship, physical environment. All right, now I want to write. So D. Rife, I said, oh, special schools for the deaf typically have full-time specialists. How do I know? Because I read that paper, okay? Uh, trained by teachers of the deaf with smaller classes and more appropriate support services. Who said that? Right. Okay, and then, uh store back the uh, deaf identity paper it is argued that these are spaces where deaf culture can thrive and where uh guardino also fight for a uh, good quality acoustic learning for example is possible when you want to write analytical writing you have to reflect make some reflection so the purple is when you put your own understanding of the reading that you just did okay so i said well although these are all good however due to factors such as geographical distance availability of specialists it is not possible for all deaf children to attend this type of school especially in countries with limited special resources. So typically, I also said, I explained, typically residential school, which is boarding school, yeah, are located in urban areas, which mean deaf children have to travel and live away from family, even at young age. 
So this makes it different from just say, oh, according to this, according to what, according to who. So what if Guadino said that? So what if Storbeck said that? What's important is on the purple box where you say, you explain, you share what does it mean to your study? Because my study is about dilemmas in educating deaf children in special school. So I set the context first, I explain the good thing about it, however, and then I will have to explain further about my argument. Okay? Can you follow so far? Yeah. Madam, I just didn't care all. Is it for yellow? Is it like um introduction? Okay. And what is the reference with them um, like the green uh -huh. color, like definition? Uh -huh. Each uh -huh. sentence is clear yeah. to follow back again. Uh -huh. yeah. It's not introduction, but it's in a in a paragraph, you know. Uh you have a topic sentence. In each paragraph, it's important for us to remember. You have to fight, have a have a like a topic sentence. How to develop a topic sentence? You can learn that. That's very language based. Okay, uh, it's a skill that you need to develop. Okay, topic sentence. You have a support sentences, and then you have a concluding sentence in a paragraph. Ah, you that you reference with um, oh, you you stand for by um any color like that. Okay, I yeah. see. Okay, it's a yellow one, it's a represented topic sentence, right? It can be, it can be. Okay, okay, okay. thank you, I see you right now. Okay. It's just a way of doing, uh, you can have a better topic sentence. This is just an example how, um, uh, it's, you can have, so there is a question, um, uh, about every paragraph we need to conclude. It's not about conclusion per se, but in each paragraph, you have a thesis statement. So um, it, it, has to it has to flow better. For, for example, the first point, you want to talk about special school. The second paragraph, you talk about the, the, the explanation from that. You know that that it has to be related, but the final sentence conclude that particular paragraph, not concluding the whole argument yet, because the conclusion of that would be at the end of the work. Here, you know, in in the work, you got introduction, and then in each in each uh, key arguments, you know, sub themes, paragraph, uh, work means the whole paper. Oh gosh, the whole, the whole paper lah. I mean the, the the whole the whole work you know? paper lah. The the writing itself, the writing itself. Okay. So um, the the actual conclusion, there is a whole paragraph concluding the whole point, but um. English or, or the language linguistically, you have to have a proper uh, closure for that particular paragraph. All right. How are we doing with time? We are a bit early today. Uh, now, um, I think I'm almost done. But I have another. Ah, oh, okay. Just a few more that would give you some time to ask questions. Okay, addressing issues in critical reading and writing. So um, it's hard, isn't it? It's hard. I, ag I agree. Um, it's not easy. Uh, you are dealing with thousands of readings. And even if you have one reading, you know, reading with questions, you read one sentence and then you have more questions, you know, and then you ended up look for more papers and then you ended up reading other papers and you forget that you are reading that paper. That happens. That's why it's important for us to uh, manage our reading, be selective, just, just bear with it, have some questions, but select which, which is relevant and then move on. Okay, this is relevant, this is not relevant. Just uh, be, be careful in selecting. 
And then um, we have also learned that there are a lot of issues um, in doing this. Um, my suggestion is practice routinely. And how to do it? We will discuss this tomorrow. The strategies to, to practice routinely. Uh, you have to um, uh, continue doing it. Then only uh, it will help you to improve. Second important point, uh, getting feedback, very important. As I said in the Johari window, uh, there are things that we know, but a lot of people don't know. And when we write, we tend to write what we know. And what we don't know, what other people know. You see what I mean? That you, you, and not just one person. If you write, there are thousands of people will read it, you know. So whoever comes to it may have questions and you're not there to explain to them. So it's important for you to write and then send it to somebody. Uh, send it to somebody to, to, to give feedback. And don't get offended when people give feedback. You know, some people, I don't know, uh, a lot of uh, us, maybe, maybe it's a culture that when people say or comment on our work, we tend to think, oh, this person doesn't like me. No, they don't care about you. you know, they care about the work. You know, if they think that work doesn't mean to them, they're going to say something, but it doesn't mean that they, do, they, 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 they say it to you as a person. You know, so don't, don't eat, get easily offended by that comment. Just move on. Oh, okay. You think, oh, that's not clear. That's fine. I'm going to improve it. Okay. It's very important to, uh, to, op to be open to, it's not criticism, you know, it's an improvement, point of improvement. Okay. Just be, be strong to uh, get feedbacks. It can get very, very harsh. Yeah, some people write, are you stupid? You know, what does this mean? You know, you can. Some people may do that, but you don't, you don't uh, take part, you know, like bother that so much because what do you want to do now is you want to improve. Okay, uh, I've said this just now, collaborate, uh, collaborate with English background people. Um, uh, collaborate with English uh, people with good English. If you need to pay, pay. You know, if you don't have the money, ask people to fund for this. You know, if it's a good work, I'm sure a lot of people uh, are willing to uh, help you uh, to get good uh, work done. Okay. Uh, write a little bit of paperwork. You know, you want to publish in a very good journal. It costs you this much. You know. You need the money for this. I'm sure some people uh, uh, appreciate if it's really uh, relevant to them. Okay. Campaign. Yes. Uh, this is what a lot of academicians in um, uh, low and low and middle income countries, uh, we fight for open access uh, because, um, you know, these journals, they are predators. Because we are the one who do the writing. We are the one who, who cry, trying to write hard, write better, receiving criticism. And we want to, whenever we want to publish, we have to pay. And then they keep the right. So, um, and whenever our friends want to read it, they, my friends, have to pay for the paper. So it's really unfair. But unfortunately, this is the, the world at the moment. And, and um, the, a lot of academicians is fighting for open access uh, articles. Okay, if you are doing a master's and PhD students, uh, if you have the capacity to publish in journals and they offer open access, go for it. Go for open access. Just so that, because as I said, work, the work in special education are very little and whatever you publish, whatever work that you're doing, is important for everybody. Um, so um, it would be very helpful if we could um, get open access. All right. Um, uh, support from authorities. Yes, I've seen some, if 
if any of you uh, from government and bodies, uh, authorities, higher authorities, or your friends with uh, authorities, the policymakers, um, request for support from them. You know, support for training, support for, uh, uh, for example, university, you can ask uh, university to subscribe to that particular journal if there is a need in that, you know, like, let's say, you've got a bunch of students programs that are doing deaf education uh, uh, work and then you say oh journal in deaf studies is very important you think uh, the authorities can fund to subscribe to the journal that would be good okay so this this involves paperwork it's not about it's not about the writing you know it's not about critical being able to ask reading with questions being able to write in a, analytically it's about support from um to have access to uh, materials and also improving your skills to uh to read better in english for example uh, or to it's not just about the skills i think now it's also important to also provide support in terms of mental illness, mental health status, because you are doing a lot of other things at the same time. And sometimes um, people forget to take care of their emotions and mental health status. So, um, and because, uh, for example, if you have fever, you know, you can check on the thermometer, oh, you got fever. You know, but with mental illness, it's what we call hidden disability. Yeah, you cannot tell if this person has mental uh, disability or mental illness, or maybe the mental is sick. Yeah, mental illness means that uh, the, the person is, is not well mentally and emotionally. So how do you help? Uh, awareness, uh, support from the administrator, colleagues yeah uh, this kind of this kind of support is important uh, because reading and writing critically is not an easy work you got a lot of rejections uh, let's say you've write something and then you've shared it but say, people say oh this is not good enough so how do you deal with that so um, it's it's uh, requires strong uh, support from people around you okay uh what else anybody want to add up how do we uh, you can write on the chat box if you want we're almost done we just need... i'm just gonna do um some key messages no all right i'm just gonna move on if you have just just write on the chat box so key points for today we have concepts in sen so identify conceptual frameworks, oops, that's typo, uh, that can guide our exploration. Yes, read more. Good suggestion. Maybe I should add this here. Or you can write. Yes, we have to read more. Never give up. Yes. Uh, just keep going, keep trying. Uh, point number two here is uh, readings. Keep track of our readings in table to help identify trends. This is very important because um, sometimes you forget whatever we read last week. So um, keep it, keep it safe. Uh, be selective, I'll ask how is this relevant to me, disregard whatever that is less important, move on, uh, make sure you manage resources using softwares. Uh, this is very important. You, you cannot do it manually, <laughs> okay? For masters and PhD students, you cannot do it manually. Please, uh, it won't be efficient, okay? You can, but you'll be, you'll be, you'll be difficult later, okay? Because those, those formatting, formatting it's very, very hustle, but it's not hustle. Taru, it's not taru, what's the other, better word? The study, study, leche, mm. leche, Synthesize arguments, uh, identify. So first you have to identify key arguments. Tedious, thank you. Uh, 
identify key arguments to present research gaps. So when you read and then when you write, then only you realize, oh, there is a, a gap. So gap means more research is needed. So people have done this, people have done that. What is not yet addressed? Okay. Uh, the last point is improving writing uh, by uh, ask feedbacks, really read and really read and rewrite. That's what you call um, research. You search and research, search and research, and you research until you find findings that you can at least agree on. For those who are doing PhD, you know, you can keep going doing this for seven years, but you don't need to do it in seven years. Uh, to certain certain part, you know, you got timeline, you got time frame that you need to complete this study. Put a full stop, and then just move on to what with whatever. Because it cannot be perfect. It can never be perfect. There will always be flaws. That's fine. You know, just uh, publish it and then see how it goes. All right. That's all for today. Um. Any questions? Because yesterday we didn't get to we didn't get to do any in Q and A session. <laughs> annoying, yeah. It's annoying to do all this uh, full stop comma, but you need to do it. It's not. It's it's why it makes it different from imagination writing. Okay. Any questions? Wow, you all understood very well. Very clear, no, no questions. <laughs> Crystal clear. So you can go to a uh, Padlet uh, QR code. You can scan this code and then go to QR code. Uh, do we have this? Let me see. This one, and then you can download. No assignment for today. <laughs> no, you don't need it. How to read papers without getting sleep? Read with questions. Mm. If you read with questions, you you your mind is working. It, when you read something uh, that is boring, move on, stop reading that book, read other things. That's why you don't do it passively. You do you do it with uh with with things in mind. Well, I want I read this because I want to understand. You read with the questions. I want to understand what happened to the children in special school. Uh, once you read it and then you say, oh, this is not about it. Move on. You got millions of readings to do, so um, it can be challenging. Yes. Uh, Yes, uh, I missed the last explanation. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, PowerPoint is here in the power, in the Padlet. Go to Padlet, need this one. Padlet slash KFK1 academic writing some your send. I put it here in the slide. Uh thank you very much everybody. So have a good night.